Let's talk about importing session data in Pro Tools. All right, so once again, this topic is a Patreon request. I believe it's a Patreon request. What I'm going to do is I was asked to go over the import session data dialog in Pro Tools, I believe. And so what I'm going to do is talk about what I think about in general with that dialog. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive into a specific feature that I find very interesting today. And if we want to talk about more details about the import session data dialog, then please let me know. And if you're on the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash noise. If you're one of the people on the Patreon, then make sure you let me know through the Patreon or through through our Discord because it's easier for me to find stuff there. All right, so first of all, you can access the dialog. You can either do the shortcut, so it's Option, Shift, and I to open up the dialog, or let me hit Cancel on this. You can go File, Import, Session Data. So there's two ways you can access this. And basically, I'm just going to choose a session. This is a song that I'm currently working on. I'm going to just hit Open, and you know, I'm just picking an arbitrary session here. But this will open that Import Session data dialogue for you. And so the reason why I tend to use this dialogue is I tend to use it to import tracks, for example, that I know have settings and details on them that I'm gonna wanna use again, that I'm gonna wanna use repeatedly. So for example, my master fader, I tend to import whenever I make a session, I often import like all of this stuff, the master fader, the click, my talk back uh, track. I often import my room reverb and then I might tweak it, you know, as necessary based on the song, but I do import it. And then I'll often import my stem tracks as well. Um, um, nowadays, depending on the, the actual track, I may have different stems. So sometimes this changes. Sometimes I wait till later to do this. Um, and then I'll also import, you know, if it's a vocalist that I've worked with before, I might import some vocals from a track that we used previously. I might import different types of delays that I tend to like to use. For example, like I might have my drum plate and import that. I might import my kick track just so that I have all the routing for that, especially for like sidechain compression stuff. Um, then I don't have to manually create the send. I can just import that that track and then I can either replace the audio that's on it or I can drag new audio onto it, you know, depending on how I want to do it. But basically, I tend to pick a bunch of tracks to import into my session and that tends to be why I will use this dialogue. So the way I tend to use this dialogue is I'll often mostly ignore the stuff in this top half here, but you'll notice that it has information for you up here. There are a few things that we can control here as needed, right? If you have to adjust the sample rate, this session that I'm importing data from is the same sample rate as the session that I'm currently in, I believe. But if it's different, you know, you can apply sample rate conversion here and make sure that everything's converted properly. I tend to choose the slowest conversion. This is like the same idea as when creating an mp3 i tend to choose the highest quality but the slowest option because that's what i choose to do it does depend on what you're working on you know and what uh requirements you have right but um usually i'll tend to choose the slowest option here so you can convert the sample rate as necessary this has to do with time code so a lot of people, I think usually when I use this dialogue, I don't have to worry about this so much. But for example, you can have it start at a certain time code location. Um, that can be helpful, especially sometimes you'll have something that starts at like the two hour mark in the time code instead of at the zero mark. And then you might want to adjust things accordingly. Or you can always import and then drag and drop everything to the correct location. But yeah, usually I tend to ignore most of this stuff. I usually tend to kind of just glance at it. You know, I'm not offsetting my incoming tracks by a certain amount of time. Um, if I were to, I would probably be doing it with bars and beats the most since I'm working in music. Um, you think about, you know, when you're importing data from one session versus another, sometimes you have, for example, two bars of silence before your intro or your verse or whatever you're starting with. And sometimes you might have four bars, right? So I could see it becoming useful in that instance. So if we want to explore this, let me know. Um, and then here we just have media options. So this has to do with where the media is stored on the computer. So these options let you do things like either link to the source media, right? So link to the video file on your computer, link to the audio file on your computer, or you can copy or convert it depending on, on what's going on with the different files and the different sessions and stuff. So usually I tend to ignore this stuff. And then usually I tend to focus on the stuff down here. So I will choose my tracks. And you'll notice here as I chose my options that it automatically went to create a new track for those tracks. So I, I like doing it that way. And so in this section, you can also import markers. Let me know if that's something you want more of a deep dive on. I'm going to go back to the tracks because this is 
how I tend to use it. Um, but basically what you can do is if you scroll down here, there are a bunch of different options for what you can import with the track, right? So you can import the tempo and meter map. I often don't want to do that. Same thing with key signature. So for example, um, if I'm importing to a new song, oftentimes it's a different key signature. So I don't want to import that key sig signature. I can speak. I don't want it to overwrite it, right? Usually with a lot of these settings, I'm choosing these if I know that I want it to be the same thing. And I'm also beginning early with the session. If I've already set the tempo and key signature, which is something that I tend to do very early on, then I will not import these items here. And you know, we have these options here for what to import with your session. And then you also have track data that you can import. So if you select here, there are a whole bunch of different options here for different categories of track data that can come with your tracks when you import them. So for example, if I don't want the alternate playlist, I just want the main playlist and nothing else, then I might uncheck this. Um, same thing for, you know, clip and media. I might not want those. I might not want the volume automation or the pan automation, right? Oftentimes when I'm importing tracks, I might want the audio files, but I might not want any of the automation, right? So I might want to import, for example, the, the audio file that's on the kick because maybe I want to use the same sample, but I don't want to have the same automation because it's a totally different song structure, right? So you can select what you want here. I find this very, very helpful. And you can also have presets. So for example, if I click on this too, I believe I have a preset. Yeah. So I have one that doesn't import the audio, right? Um, if I want to update this, so for example, um, if I was smart, this is what I might do most of the time, right, is not import that automation. And I can actually hold command and click and hold on this too. And it will blink. And that means it's now overwritten. And so now this is my preset for number two. So if I click back to one and then two, it goes back to that option for me. So if you're importing tracks, I would definitely look at all these details and figure out what you tend to want when you're importing your tracks. Oftentimes I'm importing tracks for things like the routing and the uh, plugins that are on the track, right? Sometimes I'm importing for audio files, but usually it's the routing and the plugins. So I could make options here that are only those things if I really wanted to. The other option is just to have everything selected and then clear it once you've imported it, you know, figure it out on a case by case basis. So I'm going to hit OK here. And so that's kind of my like quick and dirty lowdown on what I tend to focus on with the import session data dialogue. Let me know if you want a deep dive on any of this stuff. But what I want to do the deep dive today on is this match tracks feature. So I'm actually going to hit a cancel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create for example, uh, a stereo kick track, which is something that I commonly have in like all my sessions. That's why I'm creating it. So I have my kick track here. You'll notice that there are no plugins on here. The routing's um, not in place how I would have it, right? Usually I would have it output one, two. Um, and let me unsolo this. And then I have a few other tracks here, right? So I have my room reverb. Uh, let me actually, I'll clear all this just so we can kind of see what's happening here. I'm just going to get rid of some plugins. I have a room reverb. I have a talk back mic. It's inactive. It's muted. Same thing with my click, right? I have some stuff on my click. Maybe I'll get rid of some routing here. And then I have my master fader. And maybe I'll get rid of a couple of things just so we can kind of see. Let me bring in the F3J inserts. I'm just going to get rid of a couple things so we can kind of see really quickly. So, I have this session. Let's say I just started this session and I am like, oh, you know, I was just working on this other session and it had all these details in it and I don't want to redo all of this. So what I can do is option shift I to open that up again, pick the session that I was working in that had similarities, right? And then what I can do is I can just click match tracks and it's going to highlight all the tracks that have the same name as tracks that I have in my session, right? So you'll notice here, the master, the click, the talk back, the room reverb, they're all the same name, right? Because I actually just use them over and over, right? I've imported them before. You'll notice I have a bunch of my drum effects, my kick. Um, I actually have a bunch of tracks in this session that have the same name, the bass, right? The same name as the tracks in my other session. So now, what I'm asking the computer to do is say, hey, recognize the tracks so that are the same thing and then import the data for those tracks, right? And you'll notice I have things selected here, right? So same idea, right? I can adjust things here accordingly. But I'm going to hit OK. And what you'll notice is it's going to change a bunch of things on this, these tracks. So for example, I think the kick will change color. It's going to have plugins in place here. It's going to have routing. Same thing with like the master fader and, you know, all the tracks that we just adjusted a little bit should be uh, put back into place in the way that I tend to have them. 
And it's in the way that I had them in this session specifically, right? So here we go. So the kick, right? In that other session, I had the volume automation open because I must have automated the volume from section to section. I have my plugins in place. I have my send in place, right? I have my routing in place now. The base was apparently inactive in that other session, but I had this uh, plugin on it, right? And the routing. And let's look at my room reverb. So I had the Valhalla Vintage Verb in place on this. I had some routing in place. Um, my master fader is back to having all its plugins in place, right? And you'll notice, I think I also had some automation here on the re room reverb that's now gone, right? So it's adjusted that for me. And it's brought back in my sends. I forget which send I took off, but I took off one of the sends, right? It looks like it's brought it back in for me. So that's how you can really quickly use session data to match things. So for example, if I create my session, I'm messing around with things and I have like my master fader and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna keep it simple for a while. I'm gonna work for a while. And then later I might wanna import all this data. I can do it and it'll put it onto my existing master fader. So I don't have to import the master fader, put it next to the old one and then like drag and copy things over, right? I can actually just have it automatically overlay it as long as the name for the track is the same. So I think that's pretty cool. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you want a deep dive on any more features within that import session data dialog. I would love to do that. But for now, I have to run. So as usual, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I have that Patreon, like I mentioned, it's patreon.com slash Noise. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're running a book club on there. There's some additional content on my website for Patreon patrons. I do post early release videos and um, I take requests on there. So please feel free to join that. If you feel so inclined. It's as little as a dollar a month. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. All right. So I'm excited and I'm also struggling a little this week. So I'm excited because I just got a new AC. It's like directly behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Ta-da. It's like a, a new window AC and it's the type where it has the pass through. So the window can shut almost all the way and it's just like that much of a gap. So there's actually like a pass through and then a lot of the stuff that makes the noise is actually on the outside of the window. So I've been really excited about that. It also has Wi-Fi and stuff. So I can literally wake up in the morning and turn on my AC in the studio from bed. And then it's nice and cool here when I come up, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I've been really pumped about that. And it's so much more efficient than my old one. My old one was this old AC that I took out of my brother's garage. And I think it's like decades old. And so that one was like 5,000 BTU, I believe. And this one's 12,000 or 15. I don't remember, but it's it's a lot more efficient. It's like a lot better at cooling. So it feels so much better than the old one. It's like faster. It's like a breeze in here when it's running. So I love it. Um, so that's my excitement for the week is I actually got that installed uh, on Sunday, which was a lot of fun. And then my struggle this week is that I have been diagnosed with um, basically carpal tunnel is my understanding, right? And um, it's been really hurting me this week. It was okay before in the past few weeks. It was just my thumb that was hurting me, like this joint right here. And um, I did a lot of work over the weekend that involved repetitive motions and I've been doing bass lessons and stuff and it just got really a lot worse really fast and now it's hurting like my whole arm down to here like this muscle hurts a lot and it hurts up here in these fingers a lot and um it's just been really bothering me so if anyone has any recommendations for what to do please let me know it's it's really been bugging me I'm trying to take it easy and I'm realizing that I'm a lefty but um I'm realizing that I use my right hand a lot more than I thought. So that's been a lot of fun. But I think that's it. That's kind of my news. So anyway, I hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you all later.